Good evening and welcome for the final time this week to evening prayer. It's good to see you as it were. Tonight we're going to be reading Psalm 39. So if you have a Bible at home or a Bible app on your phone, that's where you'll need to turn to. Let's begin as we do each evening by lighting a candle together. If you have one at home, uh, you can do this as well. And we simply do this as a symbol, a reminder that God's light shines in the darkness. And as we do so, let us slow our breathing. Let's consciously become aware of God's presence. He's always with us, but let's tune in to his wavelength now. So Heavenly Father, at the end of this day and the end of this week, we come to you tonight. And we pray that as we choose to enter your presence, so you would come and reveal yourself to us. Thank you that we can lay our burdens at your feet. Thank you that your yoke is easy and your burden is light. you ever get days or maybe even a period in your life when you just kind of feel out of sorts with the world and maybe even out of sorts in your relationship with God? A time maybe when you're lacking in self-confidence and fear of what others um, or even what God might think of you keeps you silent and withdrawn. As I was uh, reading tonight's psalm uh, yesterday and preparing for this evening prayer, I was taken back to a time in my life a number of years ago. I, I began my working life in the pharmaceutical industry, but in my mid-30s, after working for five and a half years as a residential social worker, and before that on the mission field, I found myself uh, back working in the pharmaceutical industry, this time as a manager in a large vaccine production support department, overseeing nearly 40 members of staff. And the two shift supervisors who directly reported to me uh, were both very opinionated worldly men who didn't much like me being appointed by senior management as their new boss. And in the first few weeks and even months of my time there, they made my job as difficult uh, as they could. And those first few months felt for me a little bit like uh, the experience of maybe Daniel in the lion's den. And when I read this psalm yesterday, I could really relate to some of the things that David was saying. Now, although we don't know the circumstance of uh, which David writes, my personal guess is that uh, David is writing here of an experience in the year and a half that he lived as a foreigner among the Philistines. When he was taking refuge from Saul's murderous threats, he took refuge with uh, the king of, of Philistia and, and lived uh, in his court. And I can relate to David's expression of inner turmoil and self-doubt uh, in that kind of foreign land that leads to a lack of self-confidence, which in turn leads to a paralyzing silence um, that can often be the case when we're in the company of people who aren't our Christian kin and we feel out of our depth in some way. This is a messy psalm to read, but then life is messy, isn't it? Not everything in life fits into a neat box or the same goes for our, our walk with God. Aware of the uh, relative fragility and shortness of life, David expresses his fears, his anguish and frustrations and in, in this psalm, he doesn't give or, or get neat answers. 
but then sometimes we also don't get answers to uh, things in life, do we? I think what shines out of, of these words is uh, in David's thought and prayer life is that comfort is sometimes uh, not to be found in getting or knowing the answers, but in speaking to and trusting in the one who has the answers. It seems that, that David uh, is, is burning up on the inside because he, he fear has prevented him even saying any, anything good and he feels the, the, the weight of n not having been able to say uh, that, that good thing. But David begins to find release when he takes his frustrations to God and, and blurts them out rather than keeping them bottled up. David declares to, uh, to, to God in verse 7, my hope is in you. And you know sometimes that's all we need to say. In the midst of desperation at not being able to uh, to speak to those around us for fear or whatever reason it might be, it's healthy to take our, our, our concerns and grievances uh, about our day to God. God understands that suffering will cause us confusion and grief. After all, he went through suffering for us. I think this psalm is a reminder that because life is short, we need to make the most of every opportunity, but also not to worry about stupid things. It reminds us to pray often, to trust God always, to enjoy life as much as we can, and to try not to let the little things to get us down, because God will sort it out uh, if we leave things with him. Oh, and by the way, God taught me so much in my challenging two years in that managerial role uh, and I'm very thankful for, for that experience. Let's read together Psalm 39. I said I will watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I will put a muzzle on my mouth while in the presence of the wicked. So I remained utterly silent, not even saying anything good, but my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me. While I meditated, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Show me, O Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting is my life. You have made my days a mere handbreadth. The span of my years is as nothing before you. Each one's life is but a breath. Man is a mere phantom as he goes to and fro. He bustles about, but only in vain. He heaps up wealth, not knowing who will get it. But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. Save me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of fools. I was silent. I would not open my mouth. For you are the one who has done this. Remove your scourge from me. I am overcome by the blow of your hand. You rebuke and discipline men for their sin. You consume their wealth like a moth. Each man is but a breath. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry for help. Be not deaf to my weeping, for I dwell with you as an alien, a stranger, as all my fathers were. Look away from me, that I may rejoice again before I depart and am no more. Let's now turn the thoughts from those words into prayer. Father, so much of our life can be spent in anxiety and fear. Fear of what others might think or say, should we say or do something. Fear of tomorrow, fear of not having enough, fear of rejection, 
fear of a foreign situation or people we, we don't know. Thank you, Father, that you hold us and our times in your hand. Thank you that although in the light of eternity the length of our days is a mere handbreadth, you know and care for us. Father, we confess that through fear we not only sometimes make wrong decisions or say the wrong things, fear has sometimes held us back from saying good things, right things things that could have made a positive difference, things that could have rescued a situation or a person. Forgive us for the times that we have kept silent when we should have spoken, and for the times we were inactive when we should have acted. Father, help us to remember that life is short no matter how long we live, Help us to use aright the time we have left. And help us, Lord, not to put off saying what we need to say to mend a broken relationship, to deal with a habit that keeps us in bondage to sin. Help us to be generous with the money you have entrusted us with, to tell our friends about Jesus. Help us, Lord, in fact, to live each day as if it were the day of your judgment and to speak and act for your kingdom. Amen. So now may you have a good weekend and I hope that you can join us online again on Sunday morning at 11am when we'll be breaking bread together. But for now. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.